believe. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika wa sharu la ilaha and astaghfiruka wa tubu ilaha. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya'i wal mursaleen. Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqullaha haqqa tuqatih. ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدى هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بضعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار My brothers and sisters in Islam Verily all of us here Verily all of us here have an appointment with mankind. My brothers and sisters in Islam, every one of us has an appointment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with all of mankind. And that appointment is nothing other than the day of judgment. My brothers and sisters in Islam, it is an appointment that we cannot delay. It is an appointment that we must attend. It is an appointment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for us. Has written for us wherein He will judge our deeds. He will judge our deeds and then tell us from what He already knew of us. Tell us from what He already knew of us whether we are from the Ashabul Jannah. Or we are from the Ashabul Jaheem. My brothers and sisters in Islam, let us take a journey. Come with me. Let me take your hands. Let us go on a journey today. And let us see how the day of judgment shall be. Let us see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has planned this great day as Allah says, swearing upon Himself. He says, La ilaha illahu la yajma'annakum ila yawm al-qiyamati la rayba fi la rayba fi there is no doubt in it. By Allah, Allah swears and says, La ilaha illahu there is no God but He la yajma'annakum He will definitely gather you all to a day in which there is no doubt. No doubt. How can there be any doubt? For don't you see how mankind is going? How mankind is going? It is going towards its own destruction. Whether by its own hands or by natural means, it is headed for its own destruction. So how can there be any doubt about this day? Rather, this is a day about which there is absolutely no doubt. My brothers, the day of judgment, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَقَدْ جَاءَ أَشْرَاتُهَا His signs has all, have already come. Do you know that His signs have already come? And I had, I had gathered in my notes that I used to make for over a couple of years now, about six years, the number of signs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had, had told us about. And I have gathered more than 80 smaller signs. More than 80 smaller signs of the Day of Judgment. Of them perhaps 50 has already come. And of them about 15 has already passed us. Has already passed us. 
and about five or so smaller signs are about to be, are about to come and the mahdi is from one of those smaller signs imagine my brothers and sisters when you are in the grave and you have died for many many centuries and you are thing forgotten you were like as i said yesterday like a breeze in the wind huh you were like a dream forgotten imagine yourself in that grave and you are either being punished you are in the naim of jannah or you are in the adab of hellfire so you are in this state in the grave imagine yourself and there suddenly suddenly you you hear a strange sound you hear a strange sound something you've never heard before it is but israfil israfil the angel who has been uh, ordered by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to blow into the horn the trumpet as we call it the horn that he will be blowing the first blow the first blow do you know what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says will happen to the to the heavens and the earth when the when the first blow is given when the first blow is given allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says yawma tubaddalu al-ardu ghayru al-ardi was samawat wa barazu lillahi al-wahid al-qahhar allah says that day will the heavens and the earth change and no it is not the same heavens and the earth that we know of but it will be a different heaven and a different earth naam you ask me what will happen what will happen to the oceans i tell you allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa idha wa idha al bihar fujirat naam when the oceans will be set alight in fire fire imagine the oceans the great oceans of the earth Three fourths of the earth will be in fire and in flames. The oceans will be in flames. And you ask me what will ha- what will happen to the skies? Wa idha sama unshakat. When the skies will be rent asunder, they will be broken apart. That is the day of judgment. And you ask me what will happen to the mountains? What will happen to the mountains? And Allah says in the Quran, Yes, Alu Naka Anil Jibal, Fakul Yan Sifuha Rabbi Nasfa, Fayadaruha Kaan Safsafa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, They ask you about the mountains. What will happen to the mountains? So tell them, Tell them, Yan Sifuha Rabbi Nasfa. Allah will break it up, destroy it, split it in half. smash it together into smithereens until it will be turned to dust the the great mountains that you see in front of you my brothers the great mountains the hills and plains that you see allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will will rend them asunder will split them apart will will hit them together until they are dust and nothing but dust so nothing as we know of my brothers will stay the same nothing as we know of will stay the same and don't ever think And don't ever think for one second that this day of judgment the first blowing of the trumpet will take a long while will take a long while like for example when you see the destruction on TV for example on a movie it they they give you a long while to show you the destruction for example the aliens coming down and them destroying the earth they show it a long while no they say for example 5 minutes of of film to show you how much destruction is taking place but wallahi the day of judgment the first blowing of the day of judgment will be faster than as if one took a glass of milk and he could not finish putting it to his mouth the first blowing of the day of judgment and all of these things that i've talked about that the heavens being rent asunder that the oceans being set alight that the, that the mountains being split apart and then destroyed and turn into dust will take place faster than i can drink this water ya akhi fi llah ya ukhti fi llah my brother and sister in islam the day of judgment will take place on a friday It is the day that Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala created Adam and Salam. It is the day that Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala gave him death. It is the day Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala took him out of paradise. It is the day as well that the day of judgment will take place. Now on Fridays, and Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, he said in authentic hadith that every creation, every creation knows that when Friday approaches, when Friday comes and Friday approaches, 
that the day of judgment might take place. So, so whatever the day, of, when, whenever Friday comes, all of creation is in fear and terror that perhaps the day of judgment will come on that day, except for mankind and jinn, except for mankind and jinn, for they forget. They forget that the day of judgment will be on a Friday, and they are fooled by this earth, by this life. So, my brothers. When the first trumpet is blown and everyone on the face of this earth is destroyed. Every living being on the face of this earth is destroyed. And yawma tubaddalul ardu ghayral ardi was samawat and the heavens and the earth has, ter- has turned and changed and it is not the same heavens and earth that we used to know of. Then at that day, on that time, will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take the heavens and the earth in His hand will take the heavens and the earth in his hand and he will say, where are the kings? Where are the kings of this earth? I am the king today. I am the king of kings. And thereafter he will order Israfil to blow into the trumpet again, into the horn again. And this is the second blowing. The second blowing, imagine my brothers, you are in that grave and then you hear the second blowing. And suddenly you hear, and you hear these soft drops on your grave, soft drops. And you, and you wonder, what is this? And then you remember, you remember the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa that like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes the plants to grow out of the earth by the drops of rain, so shall He cause the souls to, be, to, to, to come up on the Day of Judgment with a rain. So on the Day of Judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause a rain to fall. A rain to fall on the graves. And from that rain will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause the souls to resurrect and the, bo- and the bodies to resurrect. Imagine yourself, my brothers. On that day you will feel the earth becoming a little wet. And then suddenly it is as if the whole world has changed. You are out of your grave. You are out of your grave and you have risen up. It is the day of resurrection. It is the day of resurrection and you look around you and you see people naked. But wallahi, you have no time to look at them. You have no time to look at them and they have no time to look at you. The matter is more urgent than that. The matter is more severe than that. You don't have time to look at other people's private parts and they don't have time to look at yours. The matter is more severe than that. The matter is the day of judgment. And you look around you and you see the earth has changed. No, it is not the same earth that you used to know. There are no pebbles on this earth, no, my brother. And there is no mountains on this earth, no. And there are no rivers on this earth, no. And there are no ponds on this earth, no. And there are no trees on this earth, no. But it is a plain ground, a plain, plain ground. And some of the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam describe this earth as if it is a plate of silver. And some say as if it is a plate of copper. A plate of copper, have you seen a plate of silver? Smooth, smooth and white. This is how the day of judgment is. This is how the plane of resurrection is. And you look around, you look at the, look at the skies. And wallahi, it is not the same blue sky you can see out there. No, rather it is colorful. It is a colorful sky, naam. Colorful sky, as Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi told us, and as Ibn Abbas uh, 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 translated for us, as he explained some of the verses of the Quran, that Allah subhanahu wa taala will make the sky mulawwan. He will make the sky colorful. Naam. So some parts of the sky will be green, and some parts will be blue, and some parts will be red, and some parts will be yellow, and then suddenly the color will change again. The color will change again. This is the sky. This is the sky of the day of resurrection. And this is the plane that I just described to you, the plane of resurrection. And these are the people that have woken up. These are the people that have woken up. Gone as the sun. The sun that we know of has gone. Gone is the moon. The moon that we know of is gone. And the stars that we know of is gone. Nothing is left except a sun that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause to, to bring closer to the earth. Allah, to the plane of resurrection. Allah will cause a sun. A sun to come closer to the plane of resurrection. Due to which everybody will be in tremendous heat. Due to which my brothers, you will be in tremendous heat. You do not have any clothes on yet, but yet you can still feel the tremendous heat. 
that heat from which you will start you will start to boil your skin starts to to get so hot it starts to get so hot and you start to sweat so much so much that some of us will start to drown in the sweat and the non-muslims and the non-muslims they will start to drown in their sweat and the sweat will become dried and form a clothing like like peach you know what peach is like the tar on the roads you know the tar on the roads the tar on the roads their sweat will dry up and form like the tar on the roads this will be their clothing on the day of judgment Naam, this is their clothing on the day of judgment as for the believers as for the believers and where will you be and where will I be my brothers and sisters where will you be and where will I be as for the believers on the day of judgment they will rise up and then slowly slowly the angels will come across and bring the clothing and the angels will bring the clothing of paradise for the prophets on the day of judgment and for the martyrs and the righteous as, and as for the sinners the sinners of the believers on the day of judgment then the angels will, will bring clothing that is appropriate to their level of iman that is appropriate to the level of actions so you will perhaps wear the same thobe that you're wearing perhaps you will wear a worse thobe perhaps a better thobe depending upon your level of iman my brothers on that day you will be raised with the group that used to follow Naam. which group did you used to follow? did you used to follow the non-muslims? did you used to follow the christians? Or did you used to follow the modernists? Or did you used to follow whichever sect of Islam? Which sect did you follow? Which religion did you follow? Which people did you love? Which rock star did you love, my brothers? Huh? You will be with them on the day of judgment. So you will see them around you. You will see them around you. But what an amazing sight. If you will be raised on the day of judgment in the group of the kuffar, then you will not be able to see a thing. Ah, uh, no, no. You will not be able to see a thing. Why? Because you will be raised blind. Naam, blind. The non-Muslims on that day will be blind. They will be blind. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى قَالَ رَبِّ لِمَا حَشَرْتَنِي أَعْمَى وَقَدْ كُنْتُ بَصِيرًا قَالَ رَبِّ لِمَا حَشَرْتَنِي أَعْمَى وَقَدْ كُنْتُ بَصِيرًا Subhanallah See what Allah says And whoever turns away from my remembrance in this earth مَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ Don't ever think that the one who turns away from Allah's remembrance that the punishment is only the hereafter No, it starts now It starts now فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ For verily, for him is a terrible life For him is a terrible life Never will he be satisfied with what he has in this life. وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى And on the day of judgment we shall raise him blind. Blind he will be. قَالَ رَبِّ لِمَا حَشَرْتَنِي أَعْمَى وَقَدْ كُنْتُ بَصِيرًا Say, oh my Lord. Ah, now he realizes the man. The man. إِنَّهُ كَانَ ظَلُومًا جَهُولًا He used to be a transgressor to himself. He used to be an ignorant person. Now he realizes his Lord. So he says, Ya Rabbi, lima hashartani a'ama? Why have you raised me blind? Why have you raised me blind? Explain to me why. I want to see you. I want to see what's happening. Why have you raised me blind? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And this is the way that you turned away from my remembrance. And so this is why today you will be forgotten. Just like you used to forget me on, the day of, uh, on that day. In this life you used to forget me, so today you will be forgotten. My brothers, on the day of judgment, <coughs> you will see some people with a black man sitting on their, on their shoulders. Naam, a black man, not a white man, but a black man. Do you know who these black men are? These black men are the sins of the people are the kufr and the shirk that they have committed. So the black, so the people, the kuffar, those people who have disbelieved on the day of judgment, they will be raised up blind. Huh? They will be raised up blind. Their skin will be, will be melting from the heat. And their clothing will be like the pit. Like the pit, like the tar. And on their shoulders will be a black man. 
on their shoulders will be a black heavy man. And this is the same black men who used to accompany them in their graves. Don't you know what Rasulullah said? In the graves, you will each of you will have a companion. And this companion is either your good deeds or your bad deeds, depending on which was more. Either your good deeds or your bad deeds. If it was a good deed, then he will come as a white man, bringing glad tidings to you. And if he was a bad, and if you, and if you, and if you had bad deeds, then he would come as a black man, bringing bad, bad tidings to you. So on the day of judgment, he will sit on your back, and he will have a whip in his hand, and he will whip you with it. And every soul, my brothers, in that day, will have two angels. My brothers, every soul will have two angels. Subhanallah, how great Allah is, how many angels He has created. If every soul, every man on that day will have two angels. Sa'iqun wa shaheed. What are their purpose? What are their purposes? One of them to drive you. Naam, sa'iq. You know what sa'iq is? Sa'iq is the driver. The one who rides you. The one who drives you. Now the question is why do we need a driver? Because when you see the terror on the day of judgment, when you see the terror on the day of judgment, you will want to run away. Ah, but there is no firar min Allah illa ilayh. But there is no fleeing from Allah except to Him. There is no fleeing from Allah except to Him. So you will wish to run away. You will wish to run away. So this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you a sa'iq, a driver, someone who will drive you on drive you on towards your doom. Drive you on. Wa shaheed. And a witness, someone who will witness either for you and against you. My brothers, on that day, you will see faces laughing and other faces crying. My brothers, you will see a wailing, wailing coming from, from people. On that day, my brothers, everyone, even the prophets on that day will be saying, Ya nafsi, nafsi. They'll be saying, Nafsi, nafsi, O oh myself, O oh myself. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Yawma idhin tujadilu kullu nafsin an nafsiha. That is the day that every soul should, should argue for himself. Every soul should argue for himself. No, my brothers, my brothers, your father and mother will not be there to argue for you. Even if you're an orphan and you've never seen your father and mother, and on that day you'll see your father and mother, and you'll go to them, Oh my father, how I missed you. Oh my mother, how I missed you. And they will come to you. But you will run away from them and they will run away from you. As Allah says, فَإِذَا جَاءَتِ الصَّاخَ And when the terrible sound, when the sakha, when the terrible happening takes place, يَوْمَ إِذِنْ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ that is the day that mankind will run away from his brother, wa ummihi wa abi, and from his mother and his father, wa sahibatihi wa bani, and his friend, his friend, his wife, and his children. Naam, you run away. Why will you run away? Not for anything other than the fact that perhaps he will take one of your good deeds, or that you will have to give your good deeds to him. Naam, my brothers. On that day, imagine yourself. Imagine yourself. Imagine yourself on that day when you have risen up for Rabbul Alameen, when you have stood up for the, for the Lord of mankind, and the Lord of mankind has not come yet. He has not shown Himself to you yet. You are still arguing because you know what is coming, and you can feel the heat of the sun, and you are sweating like crazy. Sweating like crazy. And if you are from those people who have always had his full on this day, or had his fill on the, or in this life, then on the day of judgment, you will be from those people who, who will be the most hungry. And if you are from the, from the people who had a lot to drink and were always satisfied, never thirsty in this life, then you will be from those people on the day of judgment who will be the most thirsty. An authentic hadith in al Tabarani. Naam, this is how your state will be. Imagine yourself in this state. And you will see on the plane of judgment, some faces laughing. You will see them, they are not sweating like you. What is wrong with them? They are not sweating like you. Something is wrong. Something special about them. Something special about them. And then you look up and you see it, it is as if the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving them shade. Naam, these are the people that the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give shade to on the day of judgment. Do you know who they are? Do you know who they are? 
They are the people whose heart are attached to the mosque. They are the people who the beautiful, beautiful woman came to them and said, Hai Talak, come to me. As the beautiful woman came to Yusuf السلام, and said, Hai Talak, come to me. I am for you and you are for me. But they said, I fear Allah. I fear Allah. They are, they are the people, the Imam who was adil, the Imam who was just. They are the people who when no one was looking used to give their charity such that he gave with his right hand and his left hand did not know. They are the people who used to cry out of fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so on that day, on that day, Will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them shade? Yawma la dhilla illa dhilluh That day in which there is no shade. There is no shade except the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's throne. And, and some other people, my brothers, you will see them with a cloud on top of their heads. A cloud, a cloud, a beautiful cloud. Like birds on top of their heads. And then you will remember, what is this cloud? And then you remember the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the one who used to read Surah Baqarah, and the one who used to read Surah Al Imran, then, they will, then the, these surahs will come on the Day of Judgment just like clouds, just like clouds and birds on the Day of Judgment giving shade to the people who used to read it. So be from these people. Who, who will find shade on the Day of Judgment. Be from these people, my brothers, a sincere advice. Be from those people who will have Surah Baqarah and Surah Al-Imran and the Qur'an coming as birds and coming as clouds giving you shade on the Day of Judgment. And then, suddenly, in all of this commotion and people running here and there, in all of this commotion and people running here and there, and running to, to, to this Prophet and that Prophet, and asking him, please help us, please help us. And they will all be saying, Ya nafsi, nafsi. Suddenly you, you hear a noise. You hear a noise and you look up. And you look up and you see angels coming in ranks. You see angels, naam, angels coming in ranks. It is but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coming. And the angels coming in ranks. وَجَاءَ رَبُّكَ وَالْمَلَكُ صَفًّا صَفًّا And your Lord and the angels come. And the angels come in ranks, in rows. And it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coming. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coming for the fasl al-qada in order to judge between mankind. And so starts the judgment of mankind. And so starts the judgment of mankind. And the first people to be judged, my brothers, on that day, was the alim, will be the alim, the scholar, the one who knew about this religion. And he will be judged. And the ulama mentioned that when the hadith mentions an alim, it does not just mean one alim. It means all the ulama will be judged first. All the people of knowledge will be judged first. And then after that, people who had money will be judged first. And then after that, people who read the Qur'an and were qurra of this Qur'an will be judged after that. And what of your deeds will be judged first, my brothers? The first thing that will be judged is your salah. The last thing that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left us, the last advice he left us with was what? Was as salah, as salah. And Anas bin Malik, may Allah have mercy upon him, narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's last advice was as salah, as salah, as salah, as salah. And he kept on saying it until he could say it no more. And he kept on saying it until he could say it no more. As salah, as salah. So that is the first thing you will be judged on the day of judgment. It's the first of your actions that will be judged on the day of judgment. So you will see and you will hear an angel calling out a name. Where is Fulan bin Fulan bin Fulan? Where is So, son of So, and son of So? Where is he? And you will see a person coming out. And he is terrified that he has to come in front of Allah. That he has to come in front of Allah and he is terrified. So he comes in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the angel that was driving him on, stay back. And he comes in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala questions him. And asks him about the ni'mah that Allah had given him. And asks him about the time, how he spent it in this dunya. About the ni'mah that Allah had given him from his health from the money, from his youth, 
from the knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given him. How did he spend it in Allah's cause? Did he, what did he do with it? And so he will reply, he will reply, and thereafter a book will be produced in front of him. An amazing book this is. An amazing book. This book, my brothers, you will look into this book, and this book of deeds. You look into it and say, Mali had al kitab. You will say, Mali had al kitab. What is wrong with this book? La yuqadiru sagiratan wa la kabiratan illa ahsaha. There is not a single thing that I have done, whether big or small, except that it, that it is in it, that is written in it, or that time that I stole, or that little girl that I kissed. It is written in it, or that person that I backbit, or that person that I smirked, or the person that I hit, or that lie, the little white lie that I said. It is written in it. And they found whatever they had done hadira present in it. And your Lord does not transgress and does not harm anybody. He does not harm anybody. No, ya akhi. Everything that you have done, ya akhi, will be written in it. When Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah ta'ala, was dying, when he was dying, he was in great pain. He was in great pain and he was saying, Oh, oh. He was saying, Oh, oh, from the pain. When Imam Ahmed was dying, he was saying, Oh, oh, from the pain. And Abdullah ibn Ahmed, and Abdullah his son came to him and said, Ya Abi, I say, oh my father, wallahi, I know the pain you're going through, but ya abi, but ya, oh my father, don't say anything, my abi, my father, don't say, oh, oh, my abi, my father, everything you are saying is being written down. And so Imam Ahmed did not say anything after that, except la ilaha illallah, and he died after that. Naam ya akhi, naam ya akhi, everything you say, whether it is good or bad, whether there is a reward associated with it, or there is no reward associated with it, whether it is halal or haram, or makruh or mustahab, or permitted, ya akhi, every single thing you do, every action you do, every saying that you do is being written into it. My brother, you will find every single thing that you have done, you will find it in it. وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ بَصِيرًا And indeed mankind is ever a witness upon himself. My brothers, you are a witness upon himself. حَاسِبُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ قَبْلَ أَن تُحَاسَبُوا حَاسِبُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Take yourselves to account before you are taken into account. My brothers, on that day, this book will be produced. And thereafter, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given his ruling, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given his ruling, then the people will either get his book on his right side, or on his left side, or on his back side. Meaning his book will be given to him either on his right side, or on his left side, or on his back side. So what? Can I tell you about the person who will be given his book on his right side? About the one who is given his book on his right side, he will say, Ha umqra'u kitabiya, inni dhanantu anni mulaqin hisabiya, fahuwa fi ishatin radiya, fi jannatin aaliya, qutufuha daniya, kulu wa shrabu hani'an bima aslaftum fi al-ayyam al-khaliya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ And the one who was given his book to his right, هَا أُمْقْرَأُوا كِتَابِيَهِ It will be tell, told to him, take the glad tidings, read your book, it has been given to you on your right side. And he will say, إِنِّي ظَنَنْتُ أَنِّي مُلَاقٍ حِسَابِيَهِ Hey, hey, I used to know that I will indeed find my, my judgment that I will be judged. فَهُوَ فِي عِيشَةٍ رَاضِيَةٍ So he will be in a jannah. He will be in the jannah. رَاضِيَةٍ In a beautiful, pleasant, happy jannah. قُطُوفُهَا دَانِيَةٍ And its fruits will be close to him. Will be close to him for his choosing. His fruits, the fruits will be close to his choosing. كُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا هَنِيَةٍ 
and it will be told to him, Kulu washrabu haniyam, eat and drink from that which you used to do. Fil ayyam al khaliyah, in the days that have passed by. And what will tell you, my brothers and sisters, about the person who will be given his book on his left side? وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِشِمَالِهِ فَيَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أُوْتَ كِتَابِيَ وَلَمْ أَدْرِ مَا حِسَابِيَ يَا لَيْتَهَا كَانَتِ الْقَادِيَةِ Subhanallah, he will say, this man will say, the one who has been given his book on his left side, he will say, يَا لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أُوْتَ كِتَابِيَ Oh, I wish I was not given my book, my book of deeds. Walam adri ma hisabiya, and that I did not know what my hisab would have been. Ya laytaha kanat al qadiya. Oh, how I wish that this matter of death was how my death, my 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 end would have been. Oh, how I wish ya laytani kuntu turaba. Oh, how I wish I was dust. Oh, how I wish I was dust. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will order and say, خُذُوهُ فَغُلُّوهُ Grab him! Grab him! خُذُوهُ فَغُلُّوهُ Tie him up! ثُمَّ الْجَحِيمَ صَلُّوهُ And then push him and throw him towards, towards Jahim, towards the fire. ثُمَّ فِي سِلْسِلَةٍ ضَرُّهَا سَبْعُونَ ذِرَاعًا فَاسْلُكُوهُ then in a chain from hellfire, the distance of which is 70 yards, tie him up. إِنَّهُ كَانَ لَا يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ الْعَظِيمِ Verily, he never used to believe in Allah the Great. He never used to believe in Allah the Great. And he never used to feed the poor. And he, and he never used to believe in the Day of Judgment. My brothers, this is the state of the person whose book will be given on the left. My brothers, which group will you be? Which group will you be? Will you be from the Ashab al Yameen? Or will you be from the Ashab al Shimal? Which group will you be? Make your choice, Ya Akhi. Ya Ukhti Fillah. Ya Akhi Fillah. Ya Habibi. My dear beloved brothers and sisters, make your choice. Which group do you wish to be? My brothers, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has judged between all of creation, and all of creation knows whether his end is in the heaven or his end is in the hellfire. It is at that time the creation will be in great torture, will be in great, uh, in, a, in a very amazing state of shock. And they will be running here, and they will be running there, saying, oh so and so, Make intercession for to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Intercede to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us. And then run to Adam alayhi salam. And he will say, no, go away from me. I am not the one. I am not the one. Verily, I disobeyed Allah. And then we will go to Ibrahim alayhi salam and Nuh and all the other prophets. And they will all say, no, go away from me. Go away from me. And then we will all go to our Habib, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes, why am I calling him our Habib? Because he is our Habib. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had said in an authentic hadith, On that day will I meet my Habib. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, On that day will I meet my Ahibbah, my close and dear friends. And so the Sahaba said, Oh, Ya Rasulullah, we are your Ahibbah. We are your close friends. He said, La, La, you are my companions. You are my companions, but my ahibba, my beloved, my beloved are those people who will come after me, who have believed in me and have loved me, and they have never seen me, and they have never seen me. And we will go to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of judgment, and say, Ya Rasulullah, we have come to you intercede to Allah for us. Say, Ya Rasulullah, intercede to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has become so angry today that he has never been so angry before and he will never be so angry after this. Ya Rasulullah, intercede to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us.
And every soul will be saying, Ya nafsi, ya nafsi. Except for Rasulullah. For, for he will not be saying, Ya nafsi, ya nafsi. He will be saying, Ana laha, I am for it, I am for it. And he will intercede for his ummah. For his ummah. Every prophet will be worried about himself. Except Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be worried for his ummah. For his ummah. Where are you, O oh ummah? Where are you, O oh nation of Rasulullah? O oh ummah of Rasulullah? From your love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be raised up to a high platform on that day. Will be raised up to a high platform. The maqam Mahmud. The raised platform on that day. And then he will prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will teach him from those names of Allah. On, from those names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah has not told us of yet. And Allah will teach him how to praise and glorify Allah on that day. And so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will glorify and praise Allah on that day. And then, and then after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has glorified and praised Allah on that day, then Allah will tell him, raise your head, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, raise your head, ask and you will be given, intercede and you will be listened to. And you will be listened to and then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will make intercession on that day. And he will make intercession for his am, for his uncle on that day. And he will make intercession for the people of kabair, from the people of great sin on that day, from his ummah. And he will make intercession for the people of hellfire, from his ummah to be taken out. And he will make intercession for the people of Jannah, who are to enter Jannah, for them to enter Jannah. And after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has made intercession, then we will all go with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the pond. Naam, to the pond of Al-Kawthar. To the pond of Al-Kawthar. This is the pond that we have, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has, had been promised. This is the pond that we will all go to. My brothers, this is the pond which is in the, in the Ard al-Hashr. This is in the, in, the, in the plain of resurrection, according to the best opinion amongst the ulama. It is in the plain of resurrection. What will tell you about this pond, my brothers and sisters? This pond, the distance of it is like the distance between Sham, between, between Damascus and between Sana'a in Yemen, the capital of Yemen. This is the distance. And this pond, my brothers, is not rectangular in size, no. Neither is it, is it obtuse, neither is it, uh, neither is it squ- squ- uh, uh, circle in size, no. It is square in size. This pond is square in size. It's the, the length and breadth are the same. It is square in size, my brothers. And the pond, the water of which is more, co- more cold, the cooler, cooler than the ice, and the water of which is sweeter than honey, and the water of which, the smell of which is more beautiful than musk. And this pond has two tunnels, yes, two tunnels that come from Jannah, from the, from the rivers of Jannah that feed the water to this pond. And this pond, my brothers, will have cups, aquab cups, just like the number of stars in the sky. Just like the number of stars in the sky. And from this the people will drink. And after drinking from this pond, my brothers, and may Allah give you and me from, to drink from this pond, no one will ever be thirsty after this. No one will ever be thirsty after, the, after drinking from this pond. And people will come to this pond, my brothers. And they will be told, go away, go away. And the angels will take them away. Who are these people, ya akhi? Who are these people? Are you from these people? Who are these people, ya akhi? The ulama mentioned that these people are, are the munafiqeen. That's, that these people are the munafiqeen. Those who used to show to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that they used to believe, yet they did not used to believe. And these people are also the different sects. The different sects of Islam, the 72 sects that have been promised the hellfire. So they will be driven away by the angels and thrown on their faces into the into Jahannam. 
And what will happen to all the other people, my brothers? What about all the non-Muslims and the kuffar? What will happen to them? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the meantime, whilst we are drinking from the pond, inshaAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell each of them, follow the, 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 the deity that you used to worship into the place that your deity leads you. Naam, so if they used to, if, if they used to worship a tree, then the tree will appear in front of them, and the tree will keep on going in front, and the people who used to worship the tree will follow after the tree, until the tree goes into the hellfire and the people who used to worship that tree goes into it. And if they used to worship the, the stone and they used to worship the idols and Lat and Al-Uzza and they used to worship Ram and Ravana and these, all, all these other idols that they used to worship, these idols will appear on the day of judgment and they will go into the hellfire and the people will be driven into the hellfire. Don't you hear what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran? He says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu ku anfusakum wa أَهْلِيكُمْ نَارًا نَارًا وَقُودُهَا النَّاسُ وَالْحِجَارَةِ Say, O oh, you people, O oh, people, save yourselves and your family from the hellfire. A fire whose fuel is men and stones. Men and stones. No, my brothers, nothing else fueled this fire except for the bodies of the men who have been thrown into it. Except for the, for the bodies of the jinn who have been thrown into this, into this hell. My brothers, after you have drunk from this and you have, you have quenched your thirst and you will never be quenched, you will never be thirsty after this, then you will come just before the Sirat. And just before the Sirat will be the scales on the Day of Judgment, the scales. And subhanallah, what can tell you about the scales on the Day of Judgment? The, the, each, each part of the scale, each side of the scale is like the size of the heavens and the earth. And the angels, when they saw the scale, they said to Allah, say, Oh Allah, these scales are so heavy, so big. For whom will they weigh on the day of judgment? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them, told them, saying, Oh, oh my angels, these scales will weigh for the one whoever I wish. For the one whoever I wish. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will place our deeds on that scale and place on one side and our bad deeds on another side. And if our good deeds were heavier, then we will be allowed to cross on. We'll be allowed to cross on. And if we were of, of those people who said, La ilaha illallah, if we said La ilaha illallah, and, they were, and, then, we were, and, we, and then we held upon this religion, and then we held upon this religion, then indeed nothing will be heavier than, than the scale of good deeds. For nothing is heavier than the name of Allah. And you will see in front of you, my brother, a person being brought out on the day of judgment. He will be, he will be brought out in front of you and he will have no good deeds except his scales and, and, and scrolls and scrolls of bad deeds. And these scrolls will be put on one side and he will say, Oh my, oh my, oh, oh ya, ya Allah, what are these, these, these scrolls compared to another small scroll wherein I just said, La ilaha illallah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell him, you will not be wronged. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name will outweigh everything else. And you will see in front of you, my brothers, another person being brought out. And he will be taken by the malaika and he will be dipped into hellfire. And then he will be taken out. Another person, he will be taken and he will be dipped into hellfire, uh, in, into jannah and then taken out. And, he, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will question the person who was dipped into hellfire. And he will say, have you ever had anything good in this life? life in this life that you just led and they will say no I never had anything good and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask the one who, have been, who has been dipped into Jannah and said have you ever had any difficulty in this life and he will say no no I've never had any difficulty why will they say this because the mere sight of the greatness of Jannah and the mere sight of the, of the greatness of hellfire will have made them for, for, will have made them forget all the difficulties and all the good things that they've ever had it is as if they have never had any difficulty in this life, and it is as if they have never lived any pleasure in this life. So after that, Ya Akhi, we come to the bridge. Naam, the bridge just before our entering to Jannah, just before the entering to Jannah. And what is this bridge? This bridge which is sharper than the sword, this bridge which, which is thinner than the hair, a bridge which has thorns and spikes, and it has scales on its sides, and it has uh, hooks that come out from underneath, of, uh, from underneath 
uh, and pull the people down on the on on the uh, on the on the bridge, pull them down into the hellfire. This is the this is the scale that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala talks talks about and says, "Wa in min kum illa wariduha," and there is not one of you except that he will have to cross over it. Meaning the, meaning the believers, meaning the believers. When he talks about the believers, there is not one of you except that he will have to have to cross over it. My brothers, no disbeliever will have to cross over the bridge, but every believer will have to cross over the bridge. So you will cross over the bridge just like just like you were in this life. How good you were in this life, according to your deeds and your actions, you will cross over the bridge. And some people will cross over the bridge as fast as the wind, some people as fast as light, and some people crawling over the bridge. And there will be hooks from the, from the hellfire underneath. They will try and grab you, my brothers, and then they will pull you down. And when the prophets will see this bridge, Ya Akhi, do you know what they will say? They say, Allahumma sallim, sallim. They will say, Oh my Lord, Oh my Lord, save us, save us. Naam, save us, save us. It is a tremendous sight, Ya Akhi. Tremendous sight. Imagine having to walk over a, a small rope and, there's, and there is a pit of fire. Yet this is not a pit of fire like any pit. No, this is Jahannam. And it is not like any, any bridge that we know of. Yet it is the Sirat that Allah has promised us. Thereafter, after people have crossed over and many people have been burnt by the, by the, by the fire, then they will come to this place just before Jannah. Just before Jannah. And it is in this place that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will judge between two believers. And if two believers had any differences between themselves, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive them and, and, and join between their hearts. So if a brother had any wrongdoing against any brother, so, uh, so you will give from your good deeds to the brother that he had wronged until you have nothing left. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you from the bad deeds. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause the person, the believer, to forgive his brother. How? By giving him more good deeds. And then tell the believer to go into Jannah, go to, go to Jannah by, by, by taking his brother's hands. In the meantime, my brothers, you will look down and you will see those people in the hellfire that have already been thrown. Those people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will recognize them because of the fact that the, the, the wudu that they used to make, that the hellfire has not really eaten them up yet. And you will realize this and you will see them, that hellfire has not really eaten them, eaten those places of wudu and the, and the places that they used to make prostration upon. These places that they used to make prostration upon, hellfire has not eaten them. And you will say, Oh Allah, such and such, so and so, ya, Oh Allah, we used to fast with him, ya, ya Allah, we used to pray with him, Oh Allah, take him out, Oh Allah, take him out. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from his great and immense mercy, he will take them out. And then, and then he, he will put them into a river, a river of life, and it will be written on their heads, Allah, the, the ones who have been saved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And thereafter, Ya Akhi, the people of Jannah will enter Jannah. The people of Jannah will enter Jannah. And at the end, after people of Jannah have, has entered Jannah, just like the full bright moon, and then after that, like, like groups, Zum, Zumar, like, like groups, they will enter into Jannah. At, at, at the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause a man to come out of Jannah, uh, out, out of hellfire, and he will be cr crawling on all his foes. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will, will forgive him and rejuvenate his, his body. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell him, what do you want? And he will say this and this and this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell him, will give you all of this, all of this and more. And I'll give you more and more. And, and I'll give you more and more until the hadith mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him ten times what is in this earth. Ten times what is in this earth. Subhana, this is the, the least of the, of the grades of the people of Jannah. So what, what can be said about the people of Jannah who are better than that? Ya Akhi, then the people of Jannah will enter the Jannah. And the Hurul Ain, the beautiful wives will wait for them. And the children of Jannah will wait for them. What a Naeem. And what about the people of Hellfire? They will be in their adab, in their punishment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring a kabsh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will order an angel to bring a kabsh a lamb and will cause it to be slaughtered. And then the, the, the malak will say, Ya Ahlul Jannah Khuludun Bila Maut. Say, O oh people, oh people of Jannah Khuludun, ever, everlasting life without death. And the people of Hellfire, everlasting life without death. Now my brothers and sisters, what can I say now? What can I say? Once an Arab came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and told him, Mata sa'a? When is the last hour? And you know what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told him? Told him, Mada a'adatta laha? So don't ask when the time is. 
Don't ask for when the day of judgment is. Rather, what have you prepared for it? Naam. What have you prepared for it? Answer this question. And be in Allah, you will have understood today's talk. Subhanallah, Allahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik.